What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for some more content for you guys. And it is the January trans window, day three of the January trans window. And Brian, have we signed anyone yet? Uh, let me just check. Um, no, <laughs> no, we have not. No, we have not. Wait, you didn't even need to turn on your phone to check. No, I just looked at the screen and it was just like, no, we haven't. <laughs> Uh, but what we're going to be doing for you guys today is a keep, loan or sell, seeing as we are in the January trance window. So this keep, loan or sell isn't, um, you know, for the broader picture, but it's for specifically for January, what we think or what we want to happen in January. Um, so let's not try and look beyond January. Let's just try and stick to January and think of what we want to happen. Um, I'm thinking probably a the maximum we want to get rid of in January is probably five at the most. I mean, what are you thinking? So I was talking yesterday uh, on my channel, Tottenham on Tour, and I came up with four. That was including one loan, and there's one extra loan. So five is probably the number we're going to hit as well. So yeah, I agree. Mm. Well, we're going to go through every single player in the current squad and we're going to give them a, a, a loan, sell or buy stamp. And let's start off with Hugo Lloris. Obviously, his contract runs out at the end of the season. Um, we've made it quite um, publicly known that we'd want to keep him for at least one more year. Definitely can definitely be two more years as well. So... I think it's a no-brainer, this one. Yeah, I think this is the easiest keep we're going to get get through with the entire team. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd want him to sign a two-year because then we could spend two years literally scouting mm. his replacement because this isn't a, uh, a position you take lightly and anyone can have one good season. We need to see a bit because it's got to be a two-year contract. It's got to be keep. Yeah, I completely agree. And, you know, there's just not any goalkeeper that you can bring in that's going to be better than Hugo Lloris. There just isn't. No, no, no not, not one that we can attract and, and, and bring to the club. Uh, I've said all along, and I won't change my stance this, that I want it to be Dean Henderson as a natural successor because English quota, young, has shown the talent he's got. Let's see what happens. thing is with Dean Henderson, I imagine, because he's not getting a, a great role at Manchester United at the moment, I imagine he's the next place he wants to go, he's going to want to knock it down first team football straight away. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. I really wish I'd thought my part. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only, yeah, look, I think it's, 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 it is a viable option, but is it a viable option from Ish Hugo signs so a So if, I don't know how it, how this works, but if they signed him and spoke, and then we, again, no one leaving his gentleman agreements, but if we were to say, listen, you are coming in, you will play cup games in Europe, whatever uh, branch of the European competition we're in, but once Hugo goes, there is no replacement, it is you, without a shadow of a doubt, that might, might swing the deal. Maybe. But we shall see. We shall see. Um, let's move over to the next player, and that is Matt Doherty. Um, obviously, right wing back. Hasn't done it since coming to Spurs by any stretch of the imagination. I think performances since Conte have come in with Matt have slightly improved, but still nowhere near good enough, uh, in my opinion. Um, so I think everyone knows which way this one's going. Yeah, Um it, it's, it's, I think it's a full house. This is this is one. It definitely hasn't worked out. When we actually signed him originally, I thought, you know what? If we're playing five at the back, this mm. could be a a great, great uh, option to have. But it just, for whatever reason, it just hasn't worked out. But we say sell, but I don't know if there's going to be any takers. It might be easier to get him out on loan. I would say sell. I stick with sell. But I think he may be easier to get out on loan. Do you not think maybe like, um, I think a club like Burnley, would like fit him down to a T. Like I think he, uh, a club like Burnley would take him. Would he go to Burnley? Would he go to Burnley? Why not? I mean, he's. I think. <laughs> what choices does he have? I mean, if we don't want him, surely he's not going to stay. Again, it all depends with wages. If they match the wages of these players now, if they are on more than they're offered, mm. they they will happily just stay there and uh, take that final paycheck or what well, the paycheck for the length of the contract. But maybe a Burnley, maybe. Back to Wolves in the uh, Adama deal. Oh, that, who knows? <laughs> who knows? Uh, Adama will have to pay even more. I think they were like twenty million just to Adama. <laughs> yeah. and and we need to pay them five million just to take yeah, Doherty as well. Right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Doherty, we are selling a Regulon, uh, Sergio Regulon. Um, he's had a really good season so far. I mean, the last couple of games hasn't been that great from him. Let's be honest. But on a whole, he's had a really strong season. And um, keep from me. Exactly the same. It's worrying about the uh, the clause that Real Madrid have. Obviously, he can say no to it. This summer but, is the last summer. Yeah, it's, uh... yes, exactly. They've got till this summer window to uh, activate that clause. I, I don't know how it works. Can they, can they do it? 
try let's just say for instance try January regular and says no and then try again in the summer and maybe or is it only a one so, time yeah. okay so so that's always to be worried listen I, he's had good games he's had average games but I will say and I said it when Conte comes I think he is the player that could probably gain the most out of uh, Conte's arrival and I hope 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 he stays mm, agreed Let's move on to Kuti Romero. Um, obviously, um, you know, hasn't had that much football uh, since coming to Spurs. But look, I think um, <laughs> there's no option here. It's obviously keep. W- without a doubt. I mean, I-, I got to see in the three games that I went to with you last time. And what I love about him is just how easy he made things. What, what other defenders were struggling, making look quite difficult. He did it as if it was just like treading water. He is... Unbelievable when his aggression started to come through. And then obviously he's picked up this nasty injury, but he's on the way back and he is a definite no-brainer. He is keep, keep, keep. Yeah, he's on the way back, just fighting to be fit just in time for the next international break. Uh, it's just so typical, isn't Completely. it? Completely. Completely. Um, but in terms of Romero, absolutely levels above any of our defenders yep. and we just need more players of of his kind of mentality and his quality, don't we? W- w- without a doubt. If you're going to start building a team to, for success... They have to be of the caliber of that guy. Mm. All right, Pierre Emil Hoybier. Um, I'll let you you take this one away. Yeah, well, it's my favorite. My fa- like I said, he is keep for me all day long. He is my favorite player. It's not just his attitude on the pitch and his and how he plays the game. It's his mentality. It's his uh, aura he has on the pitch. His like I've never seen a guy celebrate a goal kick or a throw in the way he does. Um, <laughs> he 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 his character. I'm very, very impressed with. But like I said, he's my favourite player. But if we can get an upgrade, you get an upgrade. But if it was to me, he is keep, keep, keep. Mm, I completely agree with that. Keep for me, for Pierre as well. Um, is he one for you that could be on the shortlist for the next captaincy? Yep. I said it from when he came. Um, I just hope I get to see him score a goal and I'm not in the toilet at the st- <laughs> stadium. Uh, that'll be uh, nice to see. Hopefully against Arsenal. Stanford Bridge on Wednesday Stanford night. Bridge or Arsenal, either one of those would be lovely. Um, but yeah, he. If one of the things that really struck me is when we signed him and you watched the interview of his medical and his first, just the way he talks, he's like, listen, I'm here for the team. I'll do what it takes. I, I don't care. I'll, I'll bang heads together. I'll do what it takes to make the team win. You just got to love that when you hear that from me. Like your first interview, it's a bit uh, bold to come out and say these things. Last season, he more than lived up to that. This season, a bit mixed, but he's normally uh, fantastic in the squad. And yeah, I think he, he could be, uh, he's definitely captain material. Yeah. The only reason I would say uh, not to have him as captain is because I don't think, um, if we're looking to buy and bring in a new central midfielder, the emergence of Ollie Skip. Um, I don't think he's actually a nailed-on starter every single week um, uh, for the foreseeable future. I agree. Uh, with right that. now, maybe he is, but I don't think like moving forward he's going to be a nailed-on starter week in, week out uh, for the next two or three years, if you know what I mean. So that's why I'd probably lean more to Harry Kane or someone like that. No, I mean Harry Kane is the natural successor after Hugo. Then you need the sub captain or vice captain. But the other one I said the other day, and it's only dependent on what his English is. I'd have Romero but only depend on his English because I love central defenders being captain, just the stature of that guy and where he's going. But there, it's nice to have these predicaments like who would be the next captain, thank God. Yeah, true. Because um, Arsenal don't even know who, who they want as captain next. But anyway... They, they've already lost it. <laughs> <laughs> they've already lost that captaincy. Um, Davinson Sanchez. This is going to be an interesting one. Um, I think with Davinson Sanchez, actually, um, I've been quite vocal in saying that we need to sell him we need to sell him um, over the last year or so but actually um, his recent performances have really impressed me Um, when you're looking at the role that he plays in the right center back role obviously Romero is number one there so I think I would keep him because he's a good option for the squad well you know how I've been saying about this guy for a little while now I'm definitely a keep with him he's like I said he's not the most aesthetically pleasing defender you'll ever see he's not like a Rio Ferdinand or a Jan Vertonghen but he's getting the job done. And in his first season with the club, with Jan and Vertonghen, Jan and Vertonghen, Jan and Toby, he was uh, brilliant. He mm. needs that security. He can't play in a two. He can't yeah. play in a two. That's when you start seeing the flaws yeah. the flaws and the, the errors. And he's still making these slight errors, but the fact that there's three at the back, they're not getting capitalised mm. on. Um, if it's in a three, keep, keep, keep. Yeah. I just don't think he's strong enough in a, a back four. Yeah, I'd agree with that. 
Um, Hyung Min Son, I think we can just, um, you know, <laughs> keep, 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 keep. Uh, yep. One of the best players in the Premier League, uh, one of the best left wingers uh, probably in world football. Um, absolute talent. Um, what a player he is. And even when he's off form, he produces for us. So um, no brainer. Yeah, for me, not the, you, you spoke about the stuff on the pitch. It's what, it's what he does off the pitch as well. Every single person that comes into contact with him falls in love with him whether it's it, isn't it? yeah his 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 smile his attitude his work ethic like you saw in the documentary behind the scenes he's instrumental the amount of money he brings into the club as well um is outst is just unbelievable so yeah for me easy easy keep a daniel levy dream some would say yeah yeah uh, unfortunately he is that he is that um and let's hope that continues for many many seasons with him um, all right, Harry Winks next. Um, another interesting one. Another one who probably, if you asked me this a few weeks ago, I would have said sell. Um, if you asked me this six months ago, I definitely would have said sell. Um, but his recent form, uh, Conte's comments on him, option for the squad, I think you've got to keep. Again, I'm exactly, exactly the same as you. And I think a majority of Spurs fans, in all honesty, if they're honest, would say exactly the same boat he has had this opportunity i said i think he might be the one to get his get out of jail free card and save his career and he's had these performances and he has grabbed them with both hands he's been fantastic and yeah one of the people that were definitely on that uh cell has now definitely been taken off that shelf and put on the keep yeah and it's great to see it's great to see winksy um coming back into form because it's been a long time hasn't yep. it it's been a long time and let's just hope he, he, he can keep it up because you know you've got a window now of opportunity where you've played yourself into the manager's thoughts yeah you keep you keep yourself for january but it's all about keeping up this this kind of form up until the end of the season because it can easily flip back again yeah i mean what we've got to do and i said this with the defense as well is if he has one bad game or a couple of dodgy passes or whatever, don't get on his back. Every single player has the capability to do that. They're human. Um, it's they're, they're easy targets, like a Dyer and a Sanchez and a Davies. Um, as soon as they make a slip up, it's like, oh, no, look how useless he is. Get him out of the club. Do, they're, they're, they're allowed the odd moment here and there. And Harry Winks has shown as a true professional, right, I've got this opportunity. It is my last one. This is the club I love. If I want to take it, I'm going to have to grab it with both hands and he has to be awarded for what he's doing. Yeah, completely agree. And from one Harry to the next, Harry Kane, um, hearing new contract is uh, coming very soon for Harry Kane. Um, it's obviously a keep, obviously a keep. Talisman of the club, uh, in my opinion, probably should be the next captain of the club too. Um, if this had been exactly like Harry Wings, like how we started, if this was three months ago, four months ago, I would have been sell, sell, sell. He has um, definitely done a 180 from his, when we were going to games, I was with Danny, and uh, you could just see his attitude, his mentality, his, um, his it's just everything was pointing in at the wrong direction, whereas he has literally come since Conte's come. Even the little things where he should have got sent off against Liverpool, he wasn't making those tackles. He wasn't even attempting them. Um, he has certainly started to try and get back to what we know he is capable of, and he's an easy keep. Yeah, agreed. Um, Brian Hill up next. What do you think about Brian Hill? He started to play a couple more. All right, he started to have uh, very small uh, cameos where he's come on. I think there could be a player that I really, really do. I want to see if he stays. I want him to bulk up. I think if he could just bulk up a little bit and put a little bit more uh, meat on the bones, then he can be a force. But I think the best for him right now. He is one I wouldn't mind seeing a guy out on loan just to get some first team football. Um, regular first team football. You know like when we did with Session, it's like if you give if we give him to Hoffenheim, you play left wing back and, and they honoured that, then we would need to to get a club that would do that and hopefully get some more experience. Because I do think he's one for the future. But but if Conte says stay, he stays, but I personally would send him on loan. Interesting. Loan for Hill. I mean, I'm I'm torn between this. I'm torn between Hill. Um I mean, he is getting a, a few uh, minutes at the moment, uh, you know, a sub appearance. And I think he's doing all right. He's doing all right. And I can see why you would loan him out, because I do think he needs regular game time and regular experience. And if he is to be loaned out, I want to see him be loaned out only to a Premier League club. Mm. Only to a Premier yeah. League club. 
Uh, that's the only one I think that will work for us. So I think if that was the case, then I would probably say yes, but only um, if we can bring someone in as well. Um, only if we can bring someone in. Yep. No, so. no, that would go. Premier League is a must, not to because he, he needs, we're saying bulk up, he needs to get used to this league. Mm. There's no point loaning him out to get minutes in the league where he's... He back to Spain or something. Exactly. You know I mean? So uh, if it was a Premier League club, like a Villa, like a Villa, an Everton or whatever, yeah. um, I'd be all for it, just so he can get some minutes. But if it's not Premier League, then he stays. Mm. Emerson Royale. Um, Mixed bag so far this season from Emerson. Um, I do think there is a good right back in there. A few shocking performances, a few really good performances from him. Uh, needs work on his crossing. Uh, that was evident in the Watford game. But I think it's got to be a keep for Emerson, doesn't it? Oh, it's got to be. I mean, if we look at it, we, we've already said uh, sell dirty. So what we can do is sell both our right backs. Um, we've got to be serious here. Listen, I th he's got all the attributes to be a Conte right wing back. He just needs to work, like you said, on his crossing. And then there's a player in there. I, I, I firmly believe it. So I'm, I'm definitely keep. Mm. Um, Joe Roden. This is going to be an interesting one. Um, Conte says he sees him as um, a central figure. Um, and when I say central figure, I mean a player that plays in the central of a back three, uh, like an Eric Dyer. Um, is it Lynch? I mean, I've actually seen good things from Joe Roden whenever he's been on the football pitch, but every single manager doesn't seem to fancy him. So having said that, you're probably saying a sell. Um, and yeah, I think I would sell Roden now. I, I, I don't even think I would loan him out. I think I would sell him. I am exactly the same as you. Listen, when we signed him, one of the things I loved about him, even his debut against Chelsea, he made a couple of mistakes, but he didn't go missing. He was like, right, I'm going to make, a, I make up for these mistakes. And in the last few games before Mourinho went, he was actually our best centre-back. Mm. But there's definitely saying he, he plays well for Wales. But when there's four different managers... And he's not getting a consistent run. There's got to be something going on behind the scenes. There has to be something we, we're not party to or or not knowing. And I don't think a loan will do anything for us. It, it's just going to come back and it'll be the same, right? You've got some experience, sit on the bench again. So I don't even understand that transfer at the beginning. We, we were going for Skriniar, couldn't get him. So Joe Roden's name just got plucked out of thin air. Literally. Uh, um, so, so, yeah, I think as much as I'd love to see Joe Roden succeed at Spurs, I just can't see it happening. So yeah. it's a sell. It's a shame. It's a shame because I have seen a player in there and I've yep. definitely seen a player in there when he's playing for Wales. Um, but no manager seemed to fancy him. Exactly. So I guess the writing is a bit on the wall for Joe Roden. Maybe a loan with an option or an obligation, obligation to buy or something like that. But let's move on to his competitor in Eric Dyer. Um, brilliant season so far. Mistakes maybe slightly starting to creep into his game again as of a, for the last few weeks. Uh, but it has to be keep, doesn't it? Uh, it? It has to be. But again, this is... I keep using that term with like Sun and Kane where it's underplayed and overvalued. Sorry, overplayed and undervalued because they just asked to play, 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 play. And you, you can't do that in today's modern game. He has had a good season. And again, I think like Sanchez, in a back three, there's that extra security. So we're seeing, I mean, his passing has improved in tremendously. Yeah. Like really, really has. And yeah, he's going to make, listen, they're going to make a couple of mistakes. We don't think he's Van Dijk or anything like that. A defender makes mistakes. Just it all depends if they get capitalised on, and we mm. seem to have found a formation where they're not getting capitalised, and he has to stay. Yeah. Well, that that little slip at the end of the Southampton game was <sighs> like bloody hell. What is going on? That's Sanchez really had to uh, bail him, bail him out there. But look, Eric Dyer has had a stunning season so far. But also, when you cast your mind back to last season, around this stage last season, December. We were saying the same things about Eric Dyer, and then he had a shocking second half of the season. So let's hope it doesn't go the same way. Yeah. If he can carry on this form for the remainder of the season, then maybe we can start saying that Dyer's um, changed his, his thoughts. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, we talk about that when we're doing the watch on the Newcastle one goal. I still don't know how he did it. He went to head <laughs> it. He's on his knees and he needed it. I, this is It just doesn't happen to other people, but... He deserves credit. He seems settled. I mean, he's always been like, let's just whack him there. Let's just whack him there. And as you said last season, last season, I don't know if you noticed, we seemed to do a thing where we had a good partnership for four games yeah. and then for no reason whatsoever, one of them would just disappear for a few yeah. weeks. Um, and I think that affected Dyer. But this season, he, he has been impressive. Yeah, agreed. All right, Giovanni Lo Celso. What are you thinking? Bye-bye. <laughs> really? Bye-bye. Um, and the only reason I say bye-bye is, listen... I, I think when we first had him, we got to remember that year of the documentary when Kane and Son was out, he carried us. And when I say he carried us, it didn't reflect in assists and goals, but movement of the ball, bringing the ball forward. 
He was great, but this guy is just blighted by injuries. He's just blighted by injuries. We can't find the right position to fit him in. Um, and we, he just cannot get a consistent game run of games coming. And the only reason I, I really want to say sell is I think he's one of the players where we can still get a decent fee for. Mm. And if we need to bring in money to get to, to get players in, then he is someone that can bring in a bit of money. So I would be sell. See, I completely disagree with this one. I completely disagree. Okay. I would say keep. I would say keep. I think there's a massive, massive uh, talent of a player in there. I think, um, you know, like you say, he carried us that time. Absolutely carried us um, at the back end of that. Well, just before lockdown, wasn't it? Um, just before lockdown. So I think that if he can reproduce that form, which I back him to do, I think I think he can be a really, really valuable asset for him. The only question mark for me is the injuries. And yep. I think that if we can keep him fit, he will be a massive asset for us. That's the thing. It's... Can you keep him fit? That That's is that is the huge thing. If we had a crystal ball and he said, yep, he's going to stay fit, then I would go back to, I would say, right, let's give him a chance. Let's give him another season. But I just can't see it. I just can't see him staying fit. Like, like when I heard he got injured in the warm down, <laughs> it's just like, ha only, <laughs> only him. Um, Giolo Anderton. Yeah, Giolo Anderton in full effect. <laughs> in full effect. Um, I would say give it one more year uh, with Gio. I wouldn't want to sell him this January. Well, okay, so we're only talking about January, yeah? All right, based on the argument, <laughs> I'll revert and say keep just for this window. But if it's still the same come summer, bye bye. All right. Ryan Sessignon, um, before this season, I hadn't really seen anything um, on, a, on a pitch for Spurs that he's done. But the last couple of games he's come in, uh, he's looked a lot stronger, a lot quicker, a lot more confident. And I think he's a really good um, option to have to battle it out with Reggie for that left wing back. So I think with him and Reggie on the left wing back row, I think that, that role sort sorted now. Agreed, agreed. If if he if, if he can stay fit, and I, I believe the way that Conte addressed it and said, yeah, I've seen this injury before, we'll work and get this sorted. He looked like a bit part player, went out on loan. And I thought after the Mura game, you idiot, you've blown the one chance you're going to get but he obviously had to cover regular in a couple of games before Christmas. Liverpool game, wasn't it? That was the most impressive. Liverpool, but he also played against Norwich or Brentford as well, didn't he? Or maybe even but who? But he is impressive. And if we can get him fit and Regulon and uh, Sessignon, we keep saying about competition. That is genuine competition and mm. could be a great battle to watch, bring the best out of each other. So Sessignon is a 100% keep. Definitely. All right. <laughs> now let's move over to your favourite player in <laughs> Delhi Ali. Um, look, Delhi Ali. I think time has come now. The time has come uh, for Delhi Ali to leave this football club. In my opinion, um, you can't just keep having. You know, how many times have we said it? One good game, and then ten bad games in a row. Um, after the Liverpool game, Antonio Conte says there's no point just having one good game. You need to back it up. Yep. And did he do that? Of course he didn't. Harry Winks, on the other hand, did do that. So that's why we're talking about Harry Winks a lot more positively. Um, but Delhi Ali, unfortunately, I think it's time to say goodbye. Ta-da. Goodbye. <laughs> Don't let the door hit you on the way out. If you need a piggyback to Newcastle, oh, just give me your address. I will <laughs> gladly come and take you. Whatever you need, my friend. On my shoulders, whatever you need. Listen, um, I hear a lot of people saying, oh, we're not playing him in the right position. Oh, we do it. Listen, it's been three years now. Mm. Football evolves. Yeah. And you see players, and I don't, mean this up but I've got Paul Scholes used to be an attacking midfielder then the game was getting too quick so he went back to sit deeper and we all know what happened great players adjust to their surroundings and want to help the team and enhance the team in a way listen he was great for the first two years under Poch because we played a system that benefited him then we reverted this is where players when Ericsson's left then but he just said Do you know what it's my time to shine I have been shining but now I get to stamp my authority on this team now I'm going to show and it's just oh let's do a merchandise let 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 let's tap our cap let's uh let's sit in our car and go live on Instagram let's do a TikTok no thank you as as I put a tweet out like the Gareth Bale flag Deli Ali did one it would say gaming endorsements Tottenham in that order <laughs> and like I said mate just uh reach out to me piggyback or shoulders to Newcastle I'm on my way mate bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to Pierre Luigi Gallini. Um, hasn't got much game time when he has got the game time, hasn't really impressed that much, in my opinion. Um, the Mura game was a nine opener for me. I think he should have done a lot better in that game. Um, sell for me. 
I know he's not our player, but when I say sell, I mean don't uh, carry on the loan. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember actually I did Good Morning Tottenham with you from Toronto when we when this news and the deal was breaking when we we're doing it remotely. Um, and I thought the actual structure of this deal, bringing in a keeper before we got rid of, or if we got rid of Hugo, um, a player that's played or used to be in England. So, and I actually thought the way the deal had been structured and having backup was a good deal. But what we've seen, he, he he's very static. He played all right in the uh, the mind games, didn't he? At the beginning of the season, gave a little bit of hope. But when it's come to competitive games, he's just been left wanting and I'm sure we could find something better. So, like you, I, it's not a sell, it's like cancel loan really, isn't it, yeah. for this one? Cancel yeah. loan. Cancel loan or just don't renew at the end of yep. the season, one or two. Um, Stephen Bergvine, which is an interesting one as well. I mean, there's a lot of mixed um, views on Stephen Bergvine within the fan base. I kind of of the view that I think there's definitely a player in there. I like uh, his style of play. I like his direct style of play. I think he's got a good build for the Premier League. He's strong. He's got quick feet. Um, hasn't been consistent since joining Spurs, but I do think that there is a player in there and I would like to persist with him for a bit longer just to see if Conte can unearth anything. And I think since Conte has come in, um, in the small roles that he has played, I think he's done well. So I'm speaking for three people here. One is you, because there's three people that have always said this, there's you, there's me, and there's our brother Bobsper, who have always backed this dude. Mm. I really, really think there's a player. Obviously, he came on, scored that amazing goal against City, played well. I think you were at the game at Villa where some fractured his arm yeah. uh, just before lockdown. Yeah. He was great there. Then COVID happened. Then he picked up an injury. Then it's been stopped. Then the Liverpool game where he got abused, which was totally uncalled for. And his confidence took a huge, huge beating. But then we saw in the Wolves game that little bit of showboating, which was I still don't know how he did it. It was so quick. Um, and then the West Ham game was a, sort of a huge eye-opener. That West Ham game recently in the Carabao Cup, single-handedly in that first half, he was everywhere. Mm. At Crystal Palace, when he came on with us with Simeon, his conf he, if he's confident, he, f he can drive forward and do so many things. He is a pure confidence player. Once again, he's picking up niggling injuries, which is really annoying because you can't help... I, I feel you can't judge a player after, without them having a consistent run of games. And just when you think he's going to get that, a niggly injury picks up. But I really think there is a player there. And if Conte can get working with him and the fitness coaches can sort him, I think there is a real, real player there. He is 100% keep. Yeah. Um, Jaffet Tanganga, uh, which is going to be an interesting one. I mean... Hasn't really knuckled down a role yet. Uh, doesn't suit the wing-back role, that's for sure. Um, Centre-backs, I mean, he's not going to play in the centre because um, Eric Dyer is just levels above him. On the right-hand side, I think Sanchez and Romero are both better than him. And on the left-hand side, I just don't think it's his role, but Ben Davis has got that on lock as well. So, for me, I think Jaff needs um, time, game, game. He needs minutes. He needs to um, progress himself. And I think alone probably is the best option for him. 100% agree. And again, the Premiership. It's like when we heard last season, I think it was Galatasaray that were after him in the summer or, yeah. or Fener Barge, one of the two. Um, I didn't want him to go to the Turkish League because a guy that can pick up injuries, that league is brutal. Mm. Like, it is so physical and I thought it would do a lot more damage than good for him. He definitely needs minutes. He he needs to identify what is his position. He's at a young age now. Obviously, he, he's got the potential to be something special. I but think it's probably the right side of the centre-back. This is the thing. I mean, that's what I thought as well. And obviously, that was before we had Conte. And I didn't. Th I always thought Romero was going to be the centre of that three. Mm. So, seeing Romero there, that's just made that position nigh on impossible to try and get if, if he's fit. Um, but yeah, I think he needs game time. I think he needs a loan. And again, like you said, with uh, Hill, Premier, Premier League only. Yeah. Agreed. Lucas Moura, a keep for me. Um, since Conte's come in, he's probably been um, one of the most improved players. Yep. Um, and I think his end product is um, end product is definitely improving. You're seeing these different f lovely little through balls that he's adding to his game. You're seeing goals that he's adding to his game now. And yeah, I think I'm very, very happy with Lucas Moore at the moment. So a few years ago, I nicknamed him the Brazilian Darren Huckabee <laughs> because he just used to put his head down and run. Um, I said at the start of this season or the preseason, that I think potentially he could be our player of the season. And this was before Conte, because you just saw with the, the little spurt he had with uh, Mourinho when he played in the centre, 
that he he could have he, there's something brewing there there's something brewing there and like I said this season there's been a people have a go at him for losing the ball a lot but it's, if you look at it it's always because he's trying to drive forward it's not because he, he he does the easy pass it's simple he's trying to drive the team forward um he's been great I mean that goal against Norwich I watched it got on match today yesterday because I had the goal of the month thing again and the way he just rounded two players and then walloped it into the top corner yeah. and like I said even the, the little passes that little pass in the Watford game to, to Sun he wasn't finding that a, few, a couple of years uh, he might have seen it he couldn't pull it off yeah. he is uh, but that's, that's that's he's done that time and time again over the last um, three or four weeks yeah I, mean. I think were you in the, the Watford home game early in the season uh, no I wasn't I was in the studio okay so I mean even when he came off the bench he started making things happen immediately he is uh He's not just there now for the number and a bit of pace. He is actually making things happen. And what I do love about him is his work rate. And you know, like when you watch the videos on the Skywalk and he's, he's screaming, come on, you Spurs. He loves this club. He absolutely runs through brick walls for this club, even during the bad times. And we and we all know what happened when a, a substitution was made in the Manchester United game. Mm -hmm. um, for me, he is a, a an easy keep, without a doubt. And he's really uh, taken to this role, which is like a a right-sided number 10, a right-sided but centrally, if you know yep. what I'm trying to say. Um, I think that it definitely suits him more than when he's stuck out wide properly. Because when he's stuck out wide, he seems to like run down blind alleys and all yep. this kind of stuff. When he's more tucked inside centrally, he can just reap so much havoc. So I, I, I'm not likely to say, but what I said with Tangi is Tangi's like a Rafa van der Vaart, where the owner shouldn't be on him to defend. He just needs to get back into shape and recover and just make sure we keep the shape. And then when we get the ball, you come live again. Lucas Moore is kind of doing like you said from the number 10. He's starting on the right, but he's drifting all over the place. And the one thing you do know is when he needs to get, to get back into shape, he's there in a heartbeat. And if not covering other people, he this position really seems to be the making of him. And let's just hope he continues the second half of the season how he started the first. Yeah, definitely. So Lucas Mora is most definitely a keep. All right, and moving on to the next player we're going to talk about, and that is Tangi Undombele. Um, and I'm just going to straight up say it, and that is sell. Sell, sell, sell. Um, if Conte can't get him on side, every other manager has had problems with him. The technical ability is there for everyone to see. But if you don't have the, the mentality, then unfortunately you're not a top player. So unfortunately, it's going to have to be sell. And I say that with a heavy heart as well because of the talent that he actually has. So yeah, you say it's, it's, it's the mentality, it's the physicality. Um, again, I'm going to bring Bob Spur into this and I'll try and bring him in as often as I can for this. So when he wakes up and gets to watch things, he can hear his name being mentioned. He came out with a bold, bold statement, which I kind of agreed with it. He's got the capability to do things with the football that I haven't seen done since Gaza. That's what this, not saying he's anywhere near Gaza, but his, the way he can drift past people, the, the capabilities of this man is something exceedingly special, but he just cannot do it regularly. He cannot stay, his fitness has always been a concern, his mentality has always been a concern. Um, it, it spoke volumes when we when, when we got him, a lot of clubs were rumoured to have it, want him, and then when push came to shove, we had a clean, a clean, uh, walk through just a, it was just us and now we can see why so unfortunately as much as like you said with a heavy heart and as much as we want this transfer to work it's not going to and sell mm. yeah spot on ollie skip ollie skip everyone knows our feelings on ollie skip the future of tottenham hotspur and that can only mean one thing and that is keep absolute what a gem of a player we have on our hands. And, you know, everyone last season was banging on about him after his loan spell at Norwich, how well he did there. And he's just taken up levels uh, since when, you know, starting for Nuno. And then even since Conte has come in, he stepped up even more. Um, so I cannot wait to see what the future holds for this guy. So the way you can tell how much of an impact this guy has had is when you physically realise he's not there when he's not in the starting mm. eleven. You can see a huge Ollie Skip sized hole in the team when he's not there and, and as you said I I mean I'm not just saying because he's a Spurs player I cannot remember a youngster for a very very long time that's come in for his first proper run at the Premiership that has had such an impact on the squad um, and the team he is without a doubt keep 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 and keep for the rest of your career because he's going to be something very very special yeah completely agree 
Uh, ben Davis. Ben Davies, um, since Conte's come in, he's had a complete new lease of life at Tottenham Hotspur. The left centre-back role is taken to it like a duck to water. Um, the stats he's producing every game, second to none. Um, absolutely brilliant performances week in, week out from Ben Davies now, uh, no matter who we're playing against. I mean, even if we're going to sign another player to for the left centre-back role, I think we've got to keep him just for the squad as well. I think he's being absolutely brilliant as of late. He has. I mean, throughout these last few seasons when people have been wanting him out, the one thing you can't knock him for is his uh, personality, his commitment. He's not one of those ones that are trying to cause problems. He comes to work, puts in his shift. The left-back position had gone past him now. He's not capable of doing it, especially in our system. But the left centre-back, my word, I don't think there's a better left-sided defender in the Premier League right now. Wow. I, I mean, on form, on form. Um, he has slotted into this position incredibly people like Ariane and Ben Davies uh, Alex Davies who have been saying this for a while um, are now being shown up to, to say that obviously it's been true um, he's been a breath of fresh air mm. I mean I remember last season he played nine games on the bounce and it Coleman, Coleman worked out badly <laughs> but <laughs> that, thank you thank you Ben um, with that nine game and then he had that shocker at Brighton he mm. had a shocker at Brighton away and then um this season, he has looked revitalised, refreshed, and is just hand in glove with this role. So, uh, keep, keep, keep. And last but not least is Jack Clark. Who? Um, Jack Clark. I mean, we've hardly seen him, let's be honest, but 21 years of age, exactly the same age as Ollie Skip. Um, but sh he just looks like a boy, um, a boy every time he step puts on that Spurs shirt. Haven't really seen much in him uh, to say that, um, you know, we should keep him. The older he gets, uh, the value, the less his value goes down. So I think we just got to get rid as soon as possible, to be honest. Without a doubt. I mean, Jack, Jack Clark, and I, I, I hate, he, he, he's the full guy for this because we spent 10 million on him. And I, from the moment we signed him, I didn't understand it. Mm. That 10 million could have been used to add the bid, the bid on a Skriniar, on a Fernandez, and it would have had, those, that, they were the differences between yeah. those transfers. But yet we signed a winger that is never going to get a look in. Only had a few good games for Leeds, and I've got a, f uh, a few Leeds friends, and they even said, "Listen, I don't know why you've bought him. He's he's had a few good games, and he's even gone on loans, and it's not working. I just don't understand this transfer. I wish him all the best, and hopefully he'll go on to have a good career. But I just don't get it. And sell. Yeah, agreed. Um, so that is the squad. We've reviewed the squad in keep, loan, or sell. Um, I'll go through the ones that we want to sell and loan and then the keep will just be uh, <laughs> evident there for you guys. So sell, we've put Dokti, Roden, Delhi, Galini, Clark and Undombele. And in loan, we've put Hill and Tanganga. Um, so that leaves a lot of space in the squad for signings. Um, hopefully we can get a bit of money in for these players as well. I mean, Dokti, um, how much do you reckon we can get for him max? I, is it, even Max, 13, 12, 13. I, I think you've got a half in. I think you've literally got a half in. Six and a half, seven, bite your hand off, get him out the door. Roden? Roden's still young, so he's still going to hold a bit of value. We signed him for 14, didn't we? Mm. 10, 8.5, yeah. I would say. Galini, obviously, we can't get any exactly. money from him because he's a loan. Uh, Undombele is an interesting one. Uh, signed him for 65 million on 200 grand a week. Uh, there is no chance we're getting our money back. And I think 30 million. I would five million. Bite your hand off for that. Mm. Bite your hand off. This is like we said. I think this January we're going to find out a lot about not just the players we bring in and who's pulling the strings, but the amount of money we bring in by Conte accepting bids for whatever money. This is this is a pivotal part of this transfer window. We know January can be a real hard one, and if he has to clear the decks to get players in, I would bite your hand off for twenty five million for Ndombele right now and off the wage bill. Mm, that, that's a big thing. The wage bill is a big thing. And Clark, I mean, not going to get more than five million, are we? No. No. And that's that. So uh, that is our Keep, Loan or Sell series. Really enjoyed uh, going through that one. So thank you, everyone, for watching with us today. We'll see you all very soon for a Tottenham update and a preview with Lewis for the big Chelsea game on Wednesday night. So thank you, everyone, for watching. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on, you Spurs. Spurs.